Did you know that there's more public libraries in the United States than there are McDonald's? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> or that more people visit public libraries every year than attend sporting events, go to national parks and monuments, or visit museums combined. Yeah. Go libraries. <laughs> Now, just as a community is a collection of individuals, a library is a collection of materials. Books, CDs, DVDs, and services, and people. Hopefully something for everyone. And just as every individual in a community has their own viewpoints, their own beliefs, their own values, their own experiences, every item in a library represents a unique viewpoint as well. Now, building communities is a lot like building libraries. And it all starts with one understanding. How the building blocks of each, whether they are people or whether they are materials, interact. In the late 80s, there was a book written called All I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Anyone here ever read it? Well, good. More people use libraries and have read that book, too. That's another statistic now. <laughs> So that book was a listing of 50 rules for how we should interact with each other. I'd now like to give you all I need to know about building communities I learned from libraries, except I've only got three rules. So building a library's collection depends on one thing. And what that is is a balanced representation of competing viewpoints. All of the viewpoints that are in a library's collection have to be allowed to stand or fall on their own merits. And as you can imagine, this requires one thing for the librarians who select those materials. Recognize your own biases and keep them in check. It would be all too easy for the librarians to stock the shelves with books that they knew were right and ignore those that they disagreed with. Now, we can't ignore the fact that there are certain objective truths in life. There are certain things that we just know are right. But for the librarians, when they're shaping a collection, they need to set aside their own view, their own biases of what is right, and make sure that they allow all of those views to be expressed. Now, for communities, it's much the same way. When we live in a community, it would be very easy for us to ignore the people that we don't agree with. It would be very easy for us to balkanize ourselves into ever smaller communities of like-minded individuals. But is that truly building a community? You can't build a good library collection unless you're willing to set aside your own biases and have it represented. And you can't build a community unless you're willing to do the same. Now, when it comes to biases, biases lead to one other thing, and that's assumptions. And there's a lot of assumptions that we make. One of the most common assumptions that we make is we assume motivation. And we assume, assume intention. We assume why people do what it is that they do. Now, I was the director of the Salt Lake City Public Library before I came here. And every day at the Salt Lake City Public Library, there are between 400 and 800 people experiencing homelessness who use that library. It's about 3,000 people that use the library in a day. So between 10, 20 percent of them are homeless. Now, for the domiciled people, in the library, for a lot of them, this was unacceptable. These people weren't using the library for its intended purpose. We would get complaints constantly. These people smell. Why are they just sitting there in a chair? They're hogging the computers. There were so many assumptions that people had made about why the homeless were in the library. We received complaints every day. Now, what we decided to do was try to change the assumptions that people were making. And so we brought in three full-time caseworkers that worked with the homeless. We then started a program called uh, Project Uplift. And you want to talk about something that uh, kind of showed people. It was a day-long conference for the homeless in the main library where we brought in 30 service providers that set up booths we gave them swag bags. We gave them lunch. We gave them breakfast. We had speakers. We showed movies. 
And we were scared the first time we did this because we never had a day where we didn't receive a complaint from someone about the homeless in the library. When we did this, this was the first day that we did not have a complaint. And because what it allowed people to do was assume good faith. Suddenly they stopped attributing the motives that they had for why the homeless were there. And they saw them as using the library for the same reason that everyone else did. They assumed good faith. That's the second rule. Now in Utah, I learned a lot. I'm from Chicago. And uh, things are a little bit different out west. And one of the things that I did not know was a hot button issue was federal ownership of land. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> and um, this was something that was tearing the state of Utah apart. It was something that you had the ranchers in downstate Utah and you had the city dwellers, um, the hipsters as most of them called us, <laughs> in Salt Lake City. And they fundamentally disagreed on federal ownership of land. Now the Salt Lake City Tribune asked, hey, can we come to the library and do a debate on federal ownership of land? And I was still a relatively new director and thought, sure, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and the debate happened, and it was an almost exact even split. About 50% of the people there were ranchers from downstate Utah, and 50% of the people were from Salt Lake City itself. As you can imagine, it was raucous with the ranchers screaming and the people from the city screaming. No one listening to each other, arguing the talking points that they'd either heard on Fox News or MSNBC the previous night. And this went on for two hours. At the end of it, no one's mind had been changed. <laughs> and as the people streamed into the lobby of the library, the arguments continued. People fought, people yelled, people were screaming, and security came over and was going to break the crowd up. Um, I was the director of the library, had a little power, so I waved him off and in my best librarian voice possible said, okay guys, <laughs> calm down and let's talk. We don't shh anymore, we just say calm down and let's talk. <laughs> and they did. And what happened was that these two groups of people, one who saw this as an environmental concern that the ranchers were going to destroy it, and the ranchers who saw this as this land belongs to the people and we should use it. And as they actually started talking to each other, they came to a realization that while this group had this belief and this group had this belief, above it was a shared belief, a shared belief in the importance of federal land and the importance of how it could be used. And it changed. And all of a sudden, you saw people breaking into groups, not the ranchers here and the city folk here, but they started splitting up and mingling. By the end of it, they were exchanging phone numbers and they were making plans to visit each other. That brings us to the third rule. Civilly work towards agreement. When you stop just talking and start listening and start civilly having discussions about it, you can realize that perhaps the values and the beliefs and the opinions that you have are shared with a person that you thought you had nothing in common with. So that book, All I Really Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten, gave 50 rules on how we should interact and how we can build community. But the power of three. I'm only given three. So let's say them together. Recognize your own biases, keep them in check. Assume good faith, civilly work towards agreement. When we create libraries, these are the three things that we do. It brings everything together. And when you go out there and you create community, it's not something that someone else does. It's something that we all do as individuals, and it's something we all have a responsibility to do. And if you can do these three things, you'll be well on your way to building the best community you can. Thank you.